amazing grace shall always be my suffering oh it was grace that brought my liberty I do not know just why he came to love me so he looked beyond my faults and so my need I shall Forever lift my eyes to Calvary to view the cross where Jesus died for me. Just why he came to love me so, he loved me my fault and so my knees. I shall forever. Hi guys, thank you for joining me this morning. Um, I'm going to talk about extreme grace. Um, the term grace um, has been has been popping up every 
every so often, like these past few weeks, like my friend and I were talking about grace. I'll get into a bit more of that later. And um, I saw a few sermons about grace, and then yesterday, um, somebody was talking about a grace devotional. And I, I think the concept of grace is so foreign to us because uh, Western society or the Western world, even the Middle Eastern world and all over the world, um, grace is not a concept that we like um, because, um, first of all, let me dive into what I think uh, grace is. Grace is, for me, even if you don't agree with someone or even if they're the filthiest person in their and their like mor- morality is different than yours, religion is different than yours, or they made um, a mistake. You still you still treat them as a human being, and I think the reason why we try we we are so not good at being gracious. We think. It lets people off the hook. But what it really does is not lets people off the hook, but lets the hook change hands. Grace, for me, what it does is it it gives, um, lets God have the hook and lets us just be free to show love and respect and treat people as human beings. I think I think the church in general we we love vengeance. We love to see people exposed. And we don't say that we love to do that, but but we do cuz we're human and we love to see people get what they do what they deserve. And that is totally the opposite of grace. Grace is you're getting what you don't deserve. They say it's unmerited favor, but I think it goes deeper than that. Grace says, although you screwed up, although you're just um you're just not doing it right or although you're failing i still see you as a human being and i still will not excuse you but will cover you in until you're able to to stand on your own and i think that we are not gracious because we think it's letting people off the hook but it's putting the hook um, into God's hands and taking it out of our own hands. Um, I'm I'm reading a book by Nicholas Sparks, and Nicholas Sparks is one of my favorite authors. Um, I'm reading a book called The The Wish in what basically it is, it's about a lady who is um, a travel photographer, and she um, is um, she's dying of cancer, and her and the and and she, uh, and her young. 22 year old employee is spending the last few days with her and what what she's and they're having a conversation about her life 
and she's specifically talking about the mo um the special summer that she spent living with her aunt and her aunt's partner um um uh, like and that was also the summer that she was pregnant so she's telling this um young 22 year old um, male employee about this summer and she's about 40 something um the summer when she was pregnant and lived with her aunt and the first time she fell in love and whatever and um what caught me about this is this uh student mark is a theology student he's a christian and his dad is a minister and his mother is a social worker and uh, and this woman spent the summer with her aunt and she got pregnant at a wedlock and the aunt is has the same sex partner and this this person didn't even like didn't say what we Christians usually say, oh, uh, come to Jesus, or do you know Jesus? And I think, I think that's important, but I think it's important to witness and all that, but I think from witnessing, before you witness to people like that, you need to know, um, the place of their pain or you need to know who they really are not that i'm saying that we shouldn't uh pro proclaim the gospel or share the good news but i think before we do that we need to um know the place of the person's pain and be compassionate on a human level, not a Christian level, not a non-Christian level or whatever, but just be compassionate on a human level. I, th I think sometimes as Christians, we are so into sharing the gospel that we forget to be human, that we forget to be um, just um, sensitive to human feeling because we think our job is to let's look at, look, proclaim the gospel, let's go out there. But I think the best, my opinion, um, I think the best way is to just start with them as a human being. And I think the best way is to, um, put yourself in that person's circumstance on a human level. So I told you I live with a lot, I, my neighborhood, even my apartment building has a lot of um, gay people and lesbian people and whatever. And the first thing I do is, is not, is not say you're a, you're gay or lesbian or just walk by them or whatever. I I treat them on on a human level how I be how I'd like to be treated. So if they have partners, I ask about their partners, their family, their mother, their father, their you know if they're raising children, I ask about the children that they're raising. Not to say that I agree with the whole homosexual thing, I don't, but on a human level, I see them first as human, and then, and then everything else comes after. 
I think we need to start seeing as a society. I don't think we need to see, um, we need to ask God to help us see people as human first. So when we can see people as human first, that's when we'll get the eyes of the cross or the eyes of Jesus. Because that's what Jesus died for. Jesus died for human beings. He didn't die for Christians. He didn't die for Jews. Because at that time that's what they were. He didn't die for Jews. He didn't die for Christians. He didn't die for the saved. He died for the world. And to under... And when you... To understand that is... Um, where we need to start with grace. And then when you understand that people are human, people, humanity makes mistakes, you know. Humanity falls. Um, humanity uh, does all kinds of things to people. And when you can understand that we, we are all first human beings and and put your and try to put yourself in that person's situation that's where grace starts um some people try and have distant grace what i mean by distant grace i mean they try and have grace without putting themselves in in the person's situation and that works for time but in my experience that doesn't work um that doesn't work as well as uh putting yourself in that that person's situation uh, for example when some when when a gay person says to me, oh, my, my, my partner's mother-in-law is sick and, uh, insurance, uh, OHIP won't cover their, their bills. Um, the first thing I don't say is, oh, that's because you're living a homosexual life and, that's why your mother-in-law is sick, or whatever. I say, oh, that's so, that's so sad, I'm so sorry. Is there anything I can do, or is there anything I can pray for you, or whatever? Because I see, a first, that person is human, and then... And then everything else comes before that. And it's not only with the gay issue, it's with the with the whole race issue too. If you can see that person is human, that's where it starts. So so the, I think the greatest injustice that slavery did for us as African Canadians, Americans, is strip away our humanity and treat us as chat, as animals, as chattel. And the same thing with Jews in the Holocaust. Same thing with um, the First Nations people. Um, the 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 thing to do to people to really degrade them is not take away their food, take away their water, take away whatever, because they could get all that back. The thing to do to really um, degrade people is to strip away their humanity. 
And I think that's what all those times in history has done. We, we see people as less than human. So if we see people as less than human, that means we can treat them how we want. And you, you think it's just slavery and the Holocaust or whatever? No. That's what I think sometimes social media has done in our day. Um, the reason why some people are not gracious on social media is because they don't see that person that they're t typing about, talking about as human. They see them just as a picture or just as a celebrity or something. And I think when you get, when you see somebody as human and when you can put yourself in that person's situation, um, then grace comes normal, naturally because you can see that, oh, that person is in that situation. Or I, I wouldn't like to be in that situation. It's easy to judge when you're not in a situation. When you say, I wouldn't do this in this situation. I wouldn't do that in this situation. You, where the truth is, most of us don't know what we do in that situation. Um, so, and that's what makes it easy on social media to bash people, to um, shame people, to, um, to, to do all that meanness, because we don't have to face them, and, and to us, they're not human, they're just celebrities, and they've chosen that way, or uh, they're just quote-unquote celebrity pastors, so we can just throw things at them, we don't need to have grace, we can just throw stones, as we have opinions, and we can share. We, first of all, we do not have the right to, to comment, to, um, to shame people, because given the same circumstances, you might do worse, or you might do the same as that other person's done. So when you hear something about somebody or some ministry or whatever, the first thing I've learned to do, um, being that I'm working on being gracious, is pray for that person. Um, pray to give that person wisdom. Pray to give that person strength. Pray to give that person strategy. Because how to get through a certain situation is um, you need strategy. And so when that person uh, makes a mistake, I refuse to say th that person fa falls from grace because that's not possible. There is nothing you can do to quote unquote fall from grace. Grace is there for you. Anytime, anywhere, any, for any situation, grace is there, and you can't fall from it. You can fall into it. You can't fall from grace, but you can fall into it. And the Lord wants me to say, fall into grace today. Fall into grace today and know that it's not to excuse your sin, but it is to cover you until you can stand on your own. It's like Lot. Um, it's like um, the story of Lot where he sinned with his daughters 
and his sons covered him. They didn't expose him. Um, so it's so wonderful when we think about the grace of God and how we can have grace for people. And it's amazing when I think about it. When I think about his love, when I think about his 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 grace for us and and always remember when you're judging someone you can always be in that situation as well. So be careful who you judge because you may fall in that same situation or worse. So always, um, always have the same grace that you would want. And the Lord says to, to you today, there is a grace rescue coming for you. There is a grace rescue coming for you. And there is there is a grace rescue coming and he's on the way. And I want to say something for people that have um, misused grace. The Lord said, grace is still available, but it's not for misuse. Like, you just sin and say, oh, that's grace for me. But, oh, there's grace for me. But the Lord, but Paul says, um, should, should, should I sin? So that grace could abound, and Paul said, God forbid. Grace, the, the real understanding of grace, makes you stand tall. Makes you just better, because knowing that God has your back, it makes you just stand tall and just, the idea of grace really makes me cry. The idea of no matter what I do, the fact that I'm forgiven and I just have to ask and I don't have to pay any, uh, I don't have to pay any financial price, even though I may have to pay the consequences of my actions and my decisions, I will, because every sin has consequences. But that doesn't mean it's a lack of grace. It means you you have to be responsible for your choices and your negative decisions. So God won't take away the consequences of your sin but he will give you strategy on how to manage them. And he will give you tools and give you wisdom on how to manage them. And he will give you grace for the journey. And there are different kinds of grace for whatever you're going through. Whatever you're going through, God gives you the grace that you need for that season. And not all grace is the same for every season. Like, you may have um, a grace to be single in one season, and then when you get married, you may have the grace to be married without children in another season. And you may have the grace to raise small children in another season. And you may have the, and you, he'll give you the grace to raise teenagers. And he'll give you the grace for your young adult children and your older adult children. And when you have to look, look after your parents, he'll give you the grace 
to do that. So grace changes usually depending on what you need and what season you're in. So he's saying receive his grace today. Receive his love today. You don't have to carry it alone. And and you might you might be you you might be overwhelmed now, but the Lord has grace coming for you. There is an overabundance of grace for you. All you have to do is reach out and receive it. And he's wanting you today to reach out and receive his grace. His amazing grace. Thank you guys. Receive his grace today and receive his love today. And if and if anything about this message really stirred your heart, you can message me. No, first of all, um the Bible says um if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, you shall be saved. Um, I don't like to pray with people to receive the Lord because I believe it should be their words, it should be their heart coming forward to receive the Lord, but he's He's there. All you have to do is say what's in your heart. Even if you're not really sure, you could tell him, Lord, I'm not really sure. Or, or Rachel said, grace is available uh, for me or, or whatever. Like, you could just tell him whatever. And he'll just, he'll just come in and, and fill your heart. He'll just come in and show you what you need or bring people around you to really minister and help you in your journey. And if you want to do that, you can do that. Just be yourself. Be yourself in prayer. You don't, this is one reason why I don't pray after people because I want them to know that they can come to Jesus just as they are. Um... They can, they can talk to Jesus just like they're talking to me right now. It doesn't need to be any special words or whatever. You don't have to be super Christian or super prayerful person. Um, all you have to do is have a willing heart and ask him to show you and to come in and change your life and or however you want to say it. Um, and remember, His grace is available for you today. Thanks, guys. Bye.